Do I, no, do no, I hit this? Okay, we'll call the uh, August meeting of the Cecil Township Planning Commission to order. Uh, time now is 7.10. Uh, who's taking minutes tonight? All right. It's Christy's seven, taking minutes. It's 7.07. Just 7.07? Yes. I like it. Okay, we'll go 7.07. All right, first item on the agenda is the approval of minutes from the July 20th meeting. I Everyone, move. go ahead. I move to approve the Cecil Township Planning Commission meeting minutes dated July 20th, 2023. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> minutes are approved. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda. Jack, the floor is yours, buddy. Review of previous decisions. Might be a lot to cover here, huh? Hmm. <laughs> I thought we were gonna cover that under ordinances and amendments. Uh, we can wait. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to? Yes. Okay, was there anything else relevant besides the ordinance? Um, transfer of liquor license. Uh, that's really not a uh, that's not big us, of an yeah. issue. Um, I thought we made one other motion last month that might have been. Um, GSL, the addition, did that get approved? That should be, it has not. Okay. It, yeah. The, Dan, you haven't gotten anything from Kerry, have you? Kerry? Yeah, on GSL. Uh, I don't think so, because I, I. We were waiting on the. Okay. Yeah. Kosky right. subdivision? Didn't that pass last time? I think it did. It did. From us. That one on. Yep. Okay. And then uh, Justin Campbell consolidation. That went through. Okay. Not, nothing. No issues. Yeah. N nothing that, okay. We need to be aware. Perfect. Okay. Um, well, we'll move on then. Old business. Application 2022-0036, rank plan of lots number two subdivision. Applicants Allen and Carolyn Rank. How you doing, sir? Good, thank you. Uh, you want me to present? Please. I, I, can, I can give a recap on this one. Yeah, I think. This has been around for a while. Yeah. Bell High. Bell High's property. Thank you. So, modification. Give them property. Consolidations from property that was what was uh, frontaged in South Fayette on Cecil Rising. Due to the turnpikes taking, I had a residual of seven and three quarter acres in two pieces that 
was landlocked, except I was the common owner, so therefore they did not take it as they should have. And therefore I had land that was not accessible, that was registered in South Fayette, taxed in South Fayette, but now it's been in Cecil all along. So the back corner, there's <clears throat> 1.2 and 6.4 acres that I've merged into this that previously was just a little over 30 acre or 40 acres and merged together made a total of about 47 acres, whatever the number is down there. The I then I'm trying to, that's basically the, where Jack has the picture up there. Whoops, had the picture up there. Yep. It's the, it's the property that's adjacent to the turnpike. And uh, what I did was simply consolidated it and it's now taxed within Cecil and Washington County. Which, I'm sorry? Okay. Yeah, see the seven, the total uh, additional was 7.647 acres that it says not clean and green, but it truly is. We're not gonna worry about that. Uh, but what we did was we added it to the roughly 40 acres that I had. Then Mr. Bellhigh, who has frontage on Hallam Road, that's page two of your, of your drawings if you wanna look at it. He bought the old Hallam property, and he built a house. And unbeknownst to him, he built it very, very close to the property line. And originally, we were talking about a 40-plus lot subdivision, and he panicked and asked to buy five acres off of me before I did that. And in working with him and negotiating, that's why that sort of triangular piece of five acres will be attached to and taxed by his common, it, he'll have a consolidation plan that we'll be submitting uh, once they go out and survey it, the meets and bounds. It's called up now just by the uh, deed and uh, tax ID number. So his total acreage will then all be accessible only from Hallam with no direct access to the road through my property. The additional property that's left is uh, like 41 and a fraction, 42 acres. Of that, I'm asking for six one acre plus uh, lot subdivisions facing on, you, you went away from it, Jack. No, I'm, I, was, I was over by Hallam. This is your property now. Uh, okay, yeah, there it is, okay. So the property that is directly across from the Tim Walker property between Till and uh, Nympher, if you know those neighbors, on the high side of the road going towards McDonald on the right. What I've done is requested six one-acre lots that would be subdivided out, leaving a residual of about 37 acres, um, 36 point some odd acres, that will then be under contract to be purchased by Mr. O'Connor, Growing Seasons, GSL. He, he's the one that bought my old farm that is off to the north of this. And uh, just to be used for possible home building of one home back there. So what I'm looking at tonight is a subdivision so that the triangular piece can be attached to Mr. Bellhigh's property. No additional home to be built, no accessibility to any other property except through his driveway. Mr. O'Connor will have a 200-foot frontage on the lower right-hand side up against Richard Till. He'll also have a 75-foot-wide 75 75 right-of-way between the Lawford and Beck property that goes down to the road. And then he'll have about a 1,200-foot common border between the old property I sold him and this adjacent property. So... Cecil won't be getting 48 homes, but we're looking to be able to break this down into this. And this is also the property, if anybody was paying attention, on Monday I've worked with and under contract with uh, a builder. Because this property has to be sewered, it is currently not sewered, the sewers end between the Lawford and Nympher property. I'm gonna be extending at my expense 
the shoreline all the way to the uh, lower right hand corner and putting there there but it's a uh, pump station going up to the Midway Sewer Authority. This does not go into Cecil Sewer Authority. This only goes to Midway Sewer. And uh, I did that when I built my house 20 years ago. But because this is no further development can be had beyond this property, the economics didn't work out. So we did, will be coming in for a rezoning request to make those half acre lots for uh, luxury duplexes with a shared party wall. And they do, by the way, meet the criteria for that R2 request that I'll be submitting if we get this all subdivided and approved. And I think that's everything, if you have any questions. And, and we have gotten verbal, we're just waiting for Keith Strait, the uh, engineer for Midway, to deliver the sealed approval. Uh, so this is just, uh, Jack and Dan, so this is actually just beyond um, the properties that we're looking at. Um, 600 yards from. Yes. For, the, for the MUR. Yeah. And stuff, huh? Yeah. So you're looking at you're looking at changing some of that to R two? Well be, be, because of the fact that it's it's a dead there's no way to extend sewers through the existing property without the landowners wanting it. Right. Uh the sewer line can't go any further. To be able to expense the improvements to get the development in there it was determined with the cost of construction right now that a uh, a common wall, uh, I think they're 2,100 square foot uh, duplex each side would be the only way to really justify doing any development on that lots. So the six lots that you're preparing tonight, you're gonna to submit a rezoning request for R2 on them? Yes. And they do, we, we already did check, they do meet all the criteria for R2 if that should happen. They're all one acre plus, which I think the R2 is a minimum of a half acre. Is it a minimum half acre? Is that what it is, or third? I didn't hear the last part. What? Is it third, half or third? I'm not half. Sure. Half, it is half acre. What is it? Our one's half acre, that's what I thought. Quarter acre. That's right, that's right, quarter acre. And we definitely meet it. <laughs> well, would you be looking to subdivide those then along the party wall as the units or the duplexes? Yes. So there would be no development outside of the six acres described, but instead of being six one single family homes, there would be six duplexes with a single driveway shared up to the front door, up to the garages. Yes. Well, that's going to be a pen on issue anyway. Yes, that, that we're, we're already working with them. So we're, we're being asked to um, view the subdivision application as is under R1. But you're yes, yes, I understand. I cannot go to, to, I cannot go to like, phase two, right? Yeah, this is like 
phase, this is step one. Step of one, I understand policy. that, yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you for your transparency in saying what you're intending to do after this. It's greatly appreciated. Um, does I anybody agree. else have any questions? No. I will make a motion to approve. Um, application 2022-0036, rank plan of lots, number two, subdivision. Um, contingent that all issues from the January 19th, 2023 letter from Gateway are addressed. Um, and that nothing is signed until sewage is addressed with Correct. Midway. That's, that's, that's fine. Thank you all very much. I'll second the motion. Thank you. All right, we have a, we have a motion, we have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Motion carries. Thank you. Dan, I'm going to slide this right over here. All right, next item on the agenda is application 2023-0011, Gerber Collision Land Development Site Plan. Applicant Richard Van Dorn. Yeah. Um, Do you have this, anything for us on this, Jack? This has uh, been going on. We tabled it uh, two months ago until they got their um, few more pieces. Um, together uh we just sent them the uh, developers agreement so i don't have that you know in hand um this has been back and forth related to the stormwater management right on the site um we have an out-of-state consultant that's been working so uh we finally got the report came from the stormwater side uh, we just got the information in uh there were some comments that we added in May 17, 2023. So they've addressed uh, all of those comments at this point in time, uh, but I would still recommend you consider approving it at some point. Uh, my addressing all the comments in my letter dated May 17, 
setback requirements? Yeah, there's no, I mean, there, okay. there's no issue with setbacks. Okay. Again, the setbacks are all removed. Okay. All they're doing is putting in additional uh, paving to uh, accommodate the operation. It looks like they have a storage area for vehicles, too. Was the concern to you that it wasn't going to become a yard, like a like a laydown yard type area? Um, Sorry, a, or like to, a junkyard yeah, kind of deal. Just yeah, just trying to make sure well, that's I'm a, recalling correctly. No, that's a good uh, we'll have to deal with it. I, the use is permissible. Okay. Uh, the outside storage, uh, it, it does appear they have one area where they would have uh, some storage, but they're doing uh, some fencing there to block that out. Uh, so you won't see it. No, you're okay. No, I just, there's, we've, we've been fantastically, thankfully, very busy for the most part. And, and so, making sure we're remembering correctly because we're, we're human. And you yeah. said all the items from your May 17th letter actually have been addressed. They have been addressed, but I, I prefer just to check those one more time so that we did it in approval and we didn't send off the judgment on it. I'm with you. Any other questions? Concerns? Motion? I just want to get it taken out of record. Okay. That is it. No, that's further down, I think. That's by the uh, intersection. It was all blocked today. Well, I want to try to take a day, but the rest of the building is abandoned. It's all overgrown with weeds, the whole front of the building. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yep. But it, I don't know how long it's really rented now. Yeah. Trying to remember because we have that uh, Are you okay? ball guy looking at the Lorenzo I'm building. Right, Everything right up here. Or right here. In our real. Hmm. As, as long as she doesn't have any more questions, no, I'm. No. Yeah, we're good. All right, I move to approve application number 2023 0011. Gerber Collision Land Development Site Plan with full satisfaction of the Gateway Engineers letter dated May 17th, 2023. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion to approve and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, we're gonna be moving on to new business. We have application 2023-0028 PDV consult consolidation plan. It is. Sunoco. I have not. So he's just he's just taking and combining all the lots. I mean, cut that hill back. What last year? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right. I thought I thought at that time that he was indicating he was looking at an expansion. Yeah. I, I, yeah, we're not seeing or heard any Plus the parking. That's primarily what he was going after. Parking's always tight there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First step was to consolidate, and then he was going to. So we, uh, we issued a letter on this one. Only issued it today. It's, it's, there's, some, there's some minor comments related to it, so um, there's confusion in some of the I, yeah, I'm not sure either. I mean, he's. I would say you might want to reach out to Dave Housley. <laughs> yeah, this is a Dave Housley one. Uh -huh. <laughs> I didn't see anything on it that was a deal breaker. No, as I'm far as. Okay. No. It looks like it's all administrative. Yeah. So very very manageable. Today. Any questions, comments? Motion. I'll make a motion to approve application 2023-0028 PDV consolidation plan contingent on all uh, uh, issues from the August 17th, 2023 letter from Gateway Engineers being addressed. I'll second the motion. Okay, we have a motion to approve and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. All right, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> um, I shut my mic off. It's all you. No, I'm not going to talk that much. Uh, Monday night we had the uh, public hearing, uh, well attended. I think there may have been five or six seats that were not or that were uh, vacant. So uh, a lot of interest in the rezoning, uh, basically what you looked at last time. Um, and some really good questions. Uh, Dan did a great presentation, which I forwarded to you. Also encourage you to look at the, uh, the video of the meeting. Um, relatively long. Um, uh, you know, some of the concerns are why the mixed use. Uh, I think Tom um, answered uh, uh, many of the questions. Um, you know, as, as well as anybody could. And um, I'm gonna give him a chance to kind of expand on it uh, as well. But, um, you know, no, no major pushback. Um, I think uh, cementing the definitions is, uh, is gonna be, you know, important. Uh, Tom and I talked about one in particular that, that we may just remove because there is, you know, because of the nature of the definition. But um, I'm going to let him expand on that if you would, Tom. Um, just business service? Yeah, business services. Yeah, that's referred to somewhere in there and I'm not quite sure where that word came from. But we can't, we don't have a definition for business service and there was none in the, our um, um, model ordinance book from the state association so i mean it's kind of to me 
the word we didn't even need in, in there to even to try to have to find a definition for it. Unless you have an idea what a business service is. We would worry it could be too vague where someone says, well, I'm servicing the oil industry, so I want to weld all these pipes here in this zone. Uh, so, so that we, we figured it um, could be, become a nebulous term and we, we think we'd rather just get rid of it. That's a minor thing on the, just on the definitions part. So, so when, I, when we talked about this on Monday, um, what, we, what we did was we broke it down after we gave all the background, talked about the comprehensive plan. So we actually got into the, to, to the meat of this. So we, we broke it down into really three different things. The first was rezoning of three properties within existing districts. So this is the uh, property that, that would be expanded in the SD district that's circled here in red. Uh, this is the Koski property here, which would be industrial. Uh, we also, uh, Supervisor Kessel and I are working with Koski, who owns the property, to sort of remap this a little bit to make sure there's protection for the neighbors in this particular area. So uh, I'll expand on that a little bit in a minute. And then the third area was changing the Fuchs farm from uh, R1 to C1. And, and these were the three areas that the supervisors thought could be done quickly. So uh, I think it will be good tonight if the Planning Commission is in agreement with this, this particular change, uh, it would probably be good to make a recommendation on this to the board so that they could consider this at their September meeting. Well, the other thing on these three in particular, it's just typical zoning and typical zoning a change to it. The, the new ordinances and the new definitions and the new type of zone don't affect this. It, it's three unrelated parcels that we know that have public sewers available or, or readily available in water, and um, it's you know it could be ripe for development yes, so, in the near future. So just just to expand on this, this is the first one. Expand on this a little bit more. This is currently BPD and I-1. This is the Koski property? This is yes. the Koski property. He owned this piece, and he's buying the ABB property. Or he, has he bought it. He already closed. bought it. He owns it. So uh, the, the idea is to put a light industrial up here. This was an old industrial facility. The ABB facility was up. And, and uh, so when we looked at this, uh, we sort of all, all we want to do at this point is really change the eye. We were leaving a portion of this BPD alone uh, because we haven't, haven't put the new district in yet. So we would come back on this one. So this would be, just be a change in this. Uh, f to further expand on where we're probably going to go with this, and this would be a, uh, a lessening of this, this change here, would be to put a, uh, going all the way over towards the school, uh, we're actually going to be able to determine where the Montour Trail is going to come through here. There's going to be a Muse connection mm -hmm. for the Montour Trail. So, Tom, yeah. The, the, it should be that property line. It's actually a here. property line. Here's the green here where the trail is located now. Yeah. So Mr. they're going to work with Mr. Koski to get the trail to go through the property. But what, what they worked out in this piece here uh, was that we're going to locate the 25-foot the 20 foot right away for the trail and sort of put it at the top of the slope. And then what we're going to do is we're going to expand the commercial or the uh, village zoning to bring that over and give those people some protection through there from the whatever this turns out to be. Yeah, J Jason's right. The, the uh, actual tr uh, railroad bed is uh, butts the back of their yards. It's only what, maybe 30 feet from the, ba their, the back of their houses, 30 or 40 feet. It's uh, Koski could tell the trail, you can use, you know, I'll give you that piece again, but that would really hurt all the neighbors along there. So he agreed to push it further into his property and basically almost give up that strip. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so so if, if this, the trail property was 60 feet wide, I don't know if it's 50 or 60, he's going to give him property further back and whatever is between where he's given them the property and that line, um, it'll be available for those people to either have or buy off of him. He won't have access to it, so it just makes sense for him to um, let those people have it. 
and the, where the new trail has to be. It's solid, it's wooded, it's um, a complete privacy, probably even in the winter when the leaves are off the trees. Uh, so the neighbors were out there and they were happy to, to see that, that he's cooperating like that. And um, um, th that, that we told him then that that gives us that uh, uh, boundary that the uh, code requires to have a natural barrier for your zoning line. Like it can't be just ran with somewhere through this property. It, it says it should be delineated by a stream, a street, a property line, a railroad bed or something. So Dan's going to show that uh, um, right away through that property, um, Koski and um, the trail council are, are doing a memorandum of understanding and he's gonna plot that on there. So that's gonna be our delineation point. And uh, from there from there to those houses, it'll be R3 will be extended. R3 is green on most of our maps. It's gonna be extended there. And as Dan started to say, uh, my board had talked about increasing the industrial buffer from 150 currently to 200. But Dan had an idea See all those houses, would you point to them, Dan, along that back side that, right that abuts, here. yeah, all those right there that abuts right exactly industrial. Dan said, why don't we put a 50 foot strip of uh, R3 there and then uh, let him have 100, keep the 150. So he'd effectively still be 200 feet from those houses and there'll be a 50 foot strip that those people can use or buy rather than 200 feet that, that technically they can't touch. Uh, so if we change the buffer to 200 feet, it's still all his, where if we leave the current ordinance 150 and add another 50 in between, Koski's fine with that 200 feet, and it's a benefit to all those property owners that have sheds and gardens there now anyway. Uh, because technically, if that was 250 or 200 foot of buffer, they can't touch it. They're not supposed to disturb it, where that, that has solved that problem where they've actually disturbed it already. And he, he still has, it's still 200 feet from the industrial. So that's a Sorry, lot of- just to make sure I'm understanding, when you're saying that, that you could add that 50 feet of R3, would that be 50 feet on the back end of the R3 properties or, but it would still be Koski's property that they could buy off of him? Yeah, exactly. So if they elect to not purchase that off of him, then you have a parcel of land that's zoned two different ways? No, no yeah, it'll be, it'll it'll be, be it'll, it would be split up. Okay. It'll be delineated. Or there's a line exactly okay. 50 feet parallel between those houses. We're going to be split zone through here too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. See that arrow Thank you. Thank you for explaining. Yeah. That's. I was just a little confused. So. Yeah. I mean, you're using the zone. I mean, what we want to just make sure is that. You know, what I was telling Tom is, if we if we move the the R uh, 50 feet, he agreed to a 200 foot buffer. This way, it's guaranteed. It's not whether he wants to give it or not because it'll be it'll be 150 feet from the edge of the or the residential zone. So that'll give 50 plus 150 gives us 200. You don't have to change the ordinance. Yeah, you, we, we, or you, you're going to change the zoning. Have, nobody will have to track that in the future. Right. It'll be there in perpetuity. It will. So and, and you, you know you ask about some people could buy it. Uh, the, the couple of neighbors behind what we talked about where the trail would be. One guy said that he would buy the piece behind his instantly. You know, I mean, Koski said it would be reasonably priced because it's not really accessible to him. And uh, he said, if that guy doesn't want his, he's not interested, I'll buy that too. So all those houses, and there's probably 10 or 12 smaller houses on that, on that side, on that north side. If some of them want to buy it, some will. If some, that they're using it already. If some don't, then maybe the neighbor will buy that piece, you know, kind of behind that other guy's house. So it'll all get taken up or all swept up. So where that, so the trail used to come down, or the railroad used to come down and, and run right up, right against, right, the, da, right down in, right up against those houses. Now the trail is going to come up around. Is it going to essentially terminate at the at the school now? Yes. Yes. Is that it, the intention? Yeah, Koski owns all the way to the right. to the school right. property. Touches the school property. So that's what he'll give them. Now our, our school street, that doesn't go up to uh, what we own, it doesn't go up to where Koski's property touches. So he, that property of his will not have access to school street. His, he has a common line with the school district. So any development, even on that piece that's gonna be, uh, shows right now BPD, which will become um, mixed use commercial, he, it still has to be accessed from his either Burnside access or from Muse Bishop access where that road goes now off of the, off the top of the hill up there. Okay. So, so there's no, he has no access on 
out to that property by Muse, by the school. But um, people essentially be able to park eventually at the school and access the trail right from that. Exactly, that, that's the point. It goes right to their property. Now, uh, it seems like the school, uh, obviously we're gonna get them involved too. The, the trail works well with the school. It's a destination point. The trail, they like, they like spurs to do it. There's, they already, spurs. there's already established, I mean, I've been, I've been hunting that property bow hunting that property for years. So there's yeah. already an established trail that comes up across the property and goes right into the back well, of the wait, school. Wait, show that big so. piece there, the current industrial piece that we just had up there. Oh, you want to, uh, okay, I was trying to get in on the, the maps. No, that's a good view though. What? Yeah, if you can what zoom in there. That yeah. we, you could see kind of to the bottom right of the. That, that's the overlook on, on the yeah, other side. That's the overlook. The overlook. That's the overlook yeah. All, over here, yeah. all right. See that area with a yellow dot up right there? That's go across into that property, but Dan, that's where the trail's going to stop. The proposed uh, uh, memorandum of understanding for the trail. Then from there to where it connects over to Burnside Road through Koski's property, they're going to put to be determined. And uh, so he's going to give them a right away, but that property, he's not going to give them just a diagonal straight through his property. He's going to have a, come up with a site plan and a road system going through there because he's going to sell parcels in an industrial park. So the trail will then get on and follow them, maybe beside his road or something like that to finally get to that point. But that point, as of this week, it's going to be delineated uh, to get over to the school to be parallel behind Cherry Way right there. So yeah, that, that part would be done. It's somewhere right in through here at the, the top of slope. Yeah, there, there's a little bench that runs Tom right Tom says it'll there. come to here, and then they'll figure it out from here back to the trail. Yeah, we can't show, he can't show that yet because he, does, he hasn't laid out his road yeah. system on there. And this, this, was the, this was the piece that was this subdivided last week for Koski. So he's, he's selling this one. Stranissa operates up there on that spot. Right. And as we said over here, th this is the backyards. So we'll put, we'll extend the village zoning uh, in this area as it needs to be an extra 50 feet, which will give a, a full 200 foot buffer from there. So. Perhaps this is off topic, but whatever the issue was, the ABB property was happy to address. It will be. Is that more, wasn't there something it, it's 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 coal ref, it's coal refuse, so Mr. Koski's working with uh, the DEP to address the coal. He's he's dealing with all that. Well, that's the spoil pound Koski's old property. I think she's referring to the the other issues over on the ABB property, which. Well, he, he's dealing with all the all. He's taking over the assignment yeah. of that Act Two and everything related to that. That's one of the reasons I, I'm I'm kind of excited about this because. He wants to develop that property, so he knows he has to clean that up. Okay. I mean, yeah. I he's been saying that for years. Well, he, I mean, in all honesty, in all honesty, I mean, the, you, you know, it, it, it's 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 for, for him. It's not a risky thing because he's a coal. He's a contractor too. He's, on, he's dealt with coal his whole life. That's what his dad did. So the coal didn't scare him at all, and I think he got satisfied enough on the environmental side that he was comfortable with. You know, but he's already gotten a grant for that that original property he owns. That, he's got a grant. That's that's uh, they're doing the engineering for the cleanup. Yeah. Uh, since he bought this, they're now going to combine it to try to do one cleanup project rather than two smaller projects. Yeah, but there is money out there for cleanups. Yeah, I know that's not the, the township's purview to, to do anything about that. I was just curious. Yeah. we're just happy that we got a. Uh, a trail through there. I, I knew his dad from years ago whenever the, the, the trail system first came out. Uh, property owners started uh, inquiring after the Montour Railroad went out of business to buy the prop piece behind them. They were talking to the property owners. I was talking to them about buying the piece be my, behind my house because I bought the, the old railroad. Uh, that spur, John Koski was on it. He bought it from them. Then the trail council formed and all of a sudden the, 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 the Montour uh, Railroad stopped talking to any private owners and they started dealing with the trail. That's why the trail bought everything else. But John was the only property owner that got a piece of that Montour Railroad before they stopped selling it. Yeah. 
The way that I was telling you, though, that I used to talk to them about running a spur. That they wanted to run a spur to the school at that way to serve muse in the school. He said, "There's no way I would ever give a right away for that trail because John was using. He owned on both sides. And he said, I don't want strangers, you know, people walking through you know, the middle of my property. So he said he'd never cooperate with them. He said that as recently as six years ago to me. So. Well, but John, but see, John Allen has a different plan. I mean, he's going to run, run a street through there with parcels, so it doesn't matter if a trail runs along the road now because John's not going to really technically own anything after." Yeah. Sell parcels. Once he got, once he decided he wanted to buy the ABB property, his whole viewpoint on that. Yeah, yep. so right. I'm really happy to see it. I'm, I'm excited for this development. And it would be a good asset for the even businesses to come in there for their employees. There's a trail that runs through their uh, property, their development. Well, this, this is what we're on the table, isn't it? No, 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 no. no that, so, so what I'm describing to you is these three changes. Okay. So uh, we'll, we'll work out the final details, but I mean, if you're in general agreement with these three changes, I think at the conclusion of what we talk about here tonight, if you want to take a vote on, on these specific changes, the, the three that we're talking about uh, between South Point, uh, the Fuchs Farm, and, and this Koski property, that's something that the supervisors and feel good about it, and I think. There's right? no opposition for those. And there's, uh, no, there's uh, we'll, no people coming out with When we get to that property on Rising Road, that proposal, we'll talk to you about the, the issues there, but there was none on, on these issues, or for these three parcels at all. So that was the first part of the presentation. We got through those three. Is there any questions on the other parcels? Uh, I, I still have an issue on change two here, the one that you're. Right here. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think last month we had recommended that um, someone go back and talk to Mr. Fuchs about seeing if a few of those small parcels on Miller's Run Road, adding them in to tie that C1 into the existing C1 that's already across the street, across we, Miller's Run Road. Jason, we did. It's industrial. Th those, those three parcels he owns, it's already I1. And, and I, it was, I, I couldn't tell that until I got a magnifying glass and I, it was right in the double fold. Yep, there's little parcels up there, it's I1. Uh, Jack, do you have a big color or zoning map? I didn't bring my briefcase. I, mean, I we have, have it right here. A big map? Yeah. Open it up. You'll see that that's... There, 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 there are one, and that was the issue. No, no. I, I thought they were... No, I'm just saying I'm sure that I... There's a blue. Because what he owns, so the R1 are not the ones that he owns. Oh, yeah, yeah. He owns these over here, you're saying. Yeah. This, this one, this one, this one. But I'm talking yes. about. Well, yeah, yeah that, that's that's where he would. Come I'm out. talking about these. I think he owns these ones too, because Jack and I looked it up, and I'm I'm trying to connect this to this. You have C1 here. You have C1 here. I'm saying these three parcels, and I believe, and he does own them. I understand. Go ahead. Because, because right now you're looking at rezoning a single property property from R1 to C1, and, and and while it's a large piece of property, and it's adjacent to an I2. No, no, here it is. Here's what's over here. Now. I don't want to move it. That's the property he, he bought. Those he owns all this now. Right. He he owns all of these. But he owns all these too. Yeah, yeah. And I'm all, talking all about this. these three right here. I know, but I'm just saying. Here, here's you. Um, Southie Road. Hey guys, I'm blowing it up on the. Oh, that's I'm, blowing it, I'm blowing it up right behind you. That's not Southview's over here. This is Southview right here. I'm talking about Southview Road. Yeah, Southview right here. Southview Road. That's Southview. That's Penn's travel down Southview. So it's not the bridge. That helps. Yeah, so I'm talking about. See, this is C1. This is R1. These three parcels right here are all R1 as well. Oh, no, okay, no, see that blue right there? He owns that one directly across from South View Road. See, directly right across right. That's where he can make a cross intersection to come right into his industrial area. I'm not talking about access. Oh, I was talking about access. No, I'm talking about you're trying to rezone a single property from R1 to C1. Oh, what happened to it? I'm sorry, I thought I <laughs> There we go. Thank you. So, so we're trying to rezone. You're talking about rezoning a singular property from R1 to C1. Okay. And, and you're saying it's okay because it's adjacent to I2, and I hear that. But my thing is, we already have C1 here. 
and this is all R1. If you want to rezone this from R1 to C1, let's pull, Fuchs also owns these three properties. Let's pull these three properties in as well. So now we're tying the two C1 districts. Okay. Also, I was looking at for Hicks Road, it, it is, it's industrial. He could come through with that parcel that he owns. I didn't look at anything. I'm, 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 yeah, I access is good. I'm looking at tying C1 together so we don't have spot zone. I just what's to, yeah, what's there right now? I don't, I don't think it would be spot it's zoning. Not, it's, it's not spot zoning, and I think Tom did a really good job explaining that yeah. last month. And it's wanna, not it's not access. I'm thinking, like, down the road, if he or his estate sells any of those smaller properties that are still um, zoned as R1, and then people are going, well, I want to do this with the property, but this is what it's zoned as, and this is what I'm allowed. But what it's sandwiched between C2 and next to I well, or C1, yeah. You buy that sort of commercial. It's kind of it's no, no, no. It's That's, it's not commercial. It's listed as R1. No, no, I'm saying still. If, if if his was changed, his big piece was C1, uh -huh. and they someone came along to buy it later, like you said, right there. Mm -hmm. Everything behind it is C1. Everything across from it is R1. They'll be aware that they're not going to. I'm just looking at tying the. You want to create a new C1 district? And there's a C1 district. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, that's I'm time to get. I'm just worried about his access to be able to have a, a cross intersection there, which Penn does. They, they were never allowed to have an offset. Now, he has a lot of frontage on 980, but that would be terrible. I mean, not, that would be desirable access. And according to this map, it's, well, it says temporary closed, but Weaver Town Group's already operating out of that R1 property. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. So let's just make it C1 and let's be done with it. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Like I said, I, I didn't even look at that. I was just yeah. making sure he had access off of 50. I'm with you on access too. Yeah, access thank you. That's, we're, we're just, I think, trying to consider. 980, that doesn't, the, doesn't the creek come through here too, though? I'm sorry? Is, does the Miller's does. Run come Miller's along? Side. I don't think it crosses under there. Miller's Run's on the other side over there, yeah. And, and that he doesn't have to deal with the railroad either. That, that trail, I mean, the railroad on that trail. The railroad, there, the spur. It, yeah, he'd come right across. If, 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 if he would have to try to get access somewhere up here, we have to also deal with that across the trail. Yeah. So cross intersection is on the one hand, it doesn't need to slide back by the trail. Yeah, I'm just looking at adding a couple of those yeah, yeah, houses on to it. Yeah, when, when you look at a parcel, I've never tried to look, ask anyone that you get because you need more streets for the more people. They're already being used for commercial purposes anyways. Let's just tie it together. That's that's my thought. I mean, if that if that's your recommend if that's the board's recommendation, I think you should make that recommendation. Uh, we we would probably have to go back out and, and hold another hearing. I don't know about that. It looks tough and Gretchen. Yeah. So it's a minor thing. She determines that for us. If it's if it's sure. significant enough that you just have to start over with another hearing. That's true. So we're talking about these 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 one two three properties here. I would say at least those three, at least you know. He owns all those, so it, it ties in nicely. Okay. I mean, if he wants to extend it a little bit further, I'm not opposed to that either. Would you rather? They're all commercial properties would it be best right now, anyways. If we tabled it until knowing Gretchen's recommendation, or oh no, we can still suggest it or. I think you just make it along with your recommendations. Okay. Consider adding additional properties along 980 that are owned by Fuchs to the C1 Miller's Run Road. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because we're just a recommending body, so we can recommend. They can figure out the legalities later. <laughs> but if we, we could still do that one, and then if we, for some reason, she determines, hey, you have to have another hearing to add those, we would have, would have our own hearing for those little pieces that we don't want to hold the whole project for. Yeah. For, uh, Lost, but we access. I, I, do you think we're? Okay. Do you understand why we're we're saying, hey, it'd be good to tie that? It makes sense to me. Yeah, I got it. You're feeling old. I'm feeling like drunk. I'm like, whoa. Like the way that they have the font. Um, oh, really? I, I don't even see it. I'm just, I'm, <laughs> my eyes are really bad. No, you're right. 
All right. <laughs> no, not at all. Parcels is just a natural extension of uh, SDs. Yeah. I, I think we discussed that one pretty pretty good last month. Anyone have more questions on that one? Do you guys want to make a recommendation on this stuff before you move on to the next item? Uh, just so we don't lose track of it. Make a motion on it? You want Changes to, one, two, you want and me three. to suggest a motion? Uh, sure. <laughs> you, you are the worst resident. I, I, I think it would be the, if, if the Planning Commission wanted to recommend uh, the change of <clears throat> three properties, uh, the first being the uh, expansion of the two properties in the SD district, uh, the uh, expansion of the industrial zone on the Koski property and with the R3. yes with 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 uh, changes to the R3 as necessary to provide the adequate buffer was that I won I think I won yeah and then to uh, ch change the Fuchs farm from R1 to C1 with a recommendation to add at least three properties owned by Fuchs that butts Route 50 that would connect the C1 zones together. As long as you write it right, so whenever we approve it next That's month. I, sure I, <laughs> uh, I will make a motion to accept the proposed changes on three separate properties, including the expansion of the SD district for two properties, the expansion of the industrial district um, for the Koski properties with recommendation for changes to the R3 uh, for the addition of the 50 feet buffer on the back of the R3 zone at the back of the Koski industrial property and a change from R1 to C1 on which Fuchs, property was that? Fuchs farm. Fuchs, on the Fuchs property. Thank you, I didn't write that part down. The change from R1 to C1 on the Fuchs property with the recommendation to modify three additional properties listed as R1 owned by Fuchs to C1 as well. That's great. That was very good. That was good. What? <laughs> Got it all. More importantly, do we have a second? <laughs> I'll second the motion. Yay. <laughs> um, all right, we have a a motion for a recommendation and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay motion carries. Okay. Right, Part two. Dirty. Part two was the creation in the mixed use districts. And of course, we gave a little background to everybody. Um, we explained to them uh, some of the things, and I'll go over these with you. Um, but, but really, um, we got to the point was that, you know, comments from the Planning Commission last time uh, were how to control uh, development and limit density within the mixed use districts. What are our choices? How do other communities address these issues? That was the comments that we took from the last discussion with the Planning Commission. Yeah, so we, so we looked at three other ordinances, but we settled in really on some of the things that were in the South Park ordinance related to, to uh, mixed uses. And they do it three different things. They limit the percentage of residential and non-residential. Uh, they limit the square footage of the, the, the uh, complement, they call it to the residential uses, which would be the commercial piece. And then they require a mix of residential uses. 
So what we did, and I gave you guys a red mark version tonight of, and I worked with uh, Supervisor Cassiola to, to, to get some of these changes made, but uh, in the creation ordinance, uh, which is the one entitled um, to create two new mixed-use districts. So all the changes are shown in red from what you saw last time. Uh, there was a better definition. Does everybody have that? At the top of the page, uh, right under the definition of daycare home is the first change. You don't have that? They look the same. One that has no red line on Okay. You have red line on the second page? The top of the second page. Next use. Okay, you good? Yeah, so mixed use, there was a definition put in for mixed use. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any comments on that. A designation for a parcel of land building or a group of buildings where the intended occupancy includes multiple separate uses where said uses integrate some combination of allowed uses such as residential, office, retail, and other commercial creates a pedestrian-oriented development. Yeah. Yes. catch that's why I read it Jack's got all sorts of pens up here but nothing that writes okay no no I'm good I have one over there all right so the next part of it in the residential you know some controls obviously we have to have sewer and water and then we required a traffic study and a parking analysis parking analysis more for the anything that would be uh, that would be commercial uh, under let's see we eliminated any reference to high-rise structure we took up do we say high-rise structures shall not be permitted in the district that was taken out um, because I think we defined it everywhere else I, there was there was no contemplation of high-rise I didn't think we wanted to even mention it uh, conditional uses um, we added in the community residential homes which are defined and then we got down to the residential mixed use development shall provide a mixture of at least two of the above mentioned residential uses the area permitted for single family uses shall be limited to blank percent of the total of the development the area permitted for two family dwellings or townhouses shall be blank percent of the total development area uh, the area permitted for multifamily and garden apartments shall be limited to blank percent. So we haven't filled in those percentages. I think we were looking for some guidance from the planning commission or a recommendation. Um, yeah, and that's what came from Jason. That was what he was yeah. Yeah, but, I, but I, you and I were talking about like the whole district, but you can write that this was like limited to a block. Yeah, so it's, it's got us to uh, call the mixed. So, is there any recommendation on percentages? Right about that, it's a little bit better for a single family, but 
space and social media to try to keep a mix. Popular, they have to have some kind of a mix in there. Uh, again, but I don't know what percentage of Too, it's just something that it seems like if someone wants to do something 75%, at least if there's another 25% of something else in there, then, then uh, further. I mean, you wouldn't be thinking 90 10 is a 50 50, right? Mm -hmm. area permitted, permitted for, for two family dwellings and or townhouses shall be so that's the garden and or duplexes and townhouses sure. I mean so they are together there well the two family in the in the in the townhouses they're considered one and then the third is for multifamily or garden apartment so you have strictly single family and then you have we'll call it we'll say Two family or, or town, we'll call those really just townhouses. That's the second part. And the third part is garden apartments. When I was a commissioner years ago at South Fayette, and this was coming up, the numbers don't have to, have to add up to be 100. Because if you say no, no one category should exceed 40%, just picking a number, and there's three of them, no one can be more than 40, but you could end up having 35, 35, and 30. You could have 40, 40, and 20. All you have to do is put a top cap, and I would suggest as a developer concept, the more flexibility and, and discretion you give to the developer, the more benefit you're going to get from tax revenues. So instead of setting a specific 75, 25, then no more than if you come up with a number like that, it yeah, seems like that is certain. But the way this is written, like it says area. So area for apartments, you're talking about land, right? But, but there might be 300 apartments in this small building. So I'm not sure that these well, percentages are well, gonna well, work we, with. But, but we could just change area. That, that's probably an awkward word. We could just say that it's really the development, right? We're calling it a residential mixed use development should provide a maximum of at least the, the development uh, shall include or, or shall be, we need, to, we need to change area. The area permitted for single family uses. We could say the amount of single family units, units shall be limited to or, or apartments, yes. It the would have to be the same. units, not the I area. I, I do because. And I like the Shelby number, X percent. That does allow some flexibility. Developer would be beneficial. And But then it says at least two. There would actually be no scenario if you could just have two. But so, um, but it, is it 
give an attack or a sword in the feet. Worry about that. Yeah, so if I know my area is being hostile, but my feet have actually could um, have two types of area that would tend to serve something. Uh, yeah. Okay. That also goes along with what we've said that we've a unit or that zone of uh, mixed use residential was created to give the property owner some flexibility rather than us dictating that you have this is oh, you're not allowed duplexes here or, or no garden apartments are allowed in this zone. It gives them a flexibility. We listed every type of residential use uh, that there is, from garden apartments to, to townhouses. To, to, uh, I forget how I many. There's a whole, a whole host of them, and we want to give the property owner some flexibility. If you're going to be residential, then you can be any of these. You know, you can help pick that. So plus, and then this follows what Jason wanted. That it won't be all garden apartments in a, on a parcel. Yeah, that, I mean that was that was the concern. You're like. It, it, it was it was carte blanche to just stuff as much density in as as possible, and we wanted to prevent that. So, do we want to give a? I mean, we don't have to have the same number for all the units. So, multifamily, you know, we can we can cap multifamily at um, forty percent of the units. That would still be a. That would be a small area of the because it's dense, mm -hmm. and then. You know, if you allow single family home, fam single be up to 60% of the units, but that would be spread out over a large swath because they, they consume more area. Yeah, um, I, think, I think for single family because they consume more area, and could cap at 80% of no more than 80% and of the residential uses, and that means the remaining 20% of the residential uses could be so any of the other. Yeah. But you're saying, hey, no more than 80 or even 90 not a must fill 90%, right. but cannot fill any more than. But wait, should we ex exclude single family? I mean, all, it that's could just be all family. single family. We're I don't think any of us would have a problem with that. I don't know that we want to make, if somebody wants to do all single family, we don't want to make them have to put some townhouses with it. I think yeah, I agree with that. Let's not put the single family. That's what the complaint was in the field just plan. The, 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 the just the townhouses. Just the townhouses. Just the townhouses. Just the townhouses. Just the Valley Crest and that, that, yeah, that's that makes sense. Place to be about that. So, yeah. but single, we don't exempt single family from any limits. Okay. So, so I mean, put the limits like whatever up, not exceeding. Well, you you just say you would just change. You would let the single family percentage be a hundred percent. Right. That's what I'm saying. Or exempt yeah, make it a hundred. Keep it the same. Keep it consistent. Keep it in there because somebody will question it if it's not listed. I know. I have no problem with that, but. I, Well, that's to say, except in the case of single-family development, then the, the, all this comes into play. Okay, yeah, so we have to add that, that caveat good. in there, mm -hmm. except in the case yes. of single-family development. Thanks for working through that. Okay, we'll get that reworded. Okay. Are we okay with A then? We're going to give that some new language. And uh, do we on. want to give a percentage on, oh, yeah, you need on multifamily and on two families? Excuse me, Dan, could you bring that up for us? Do you have that? I do have that. I'm, th I'm thinking 20% on multifamily and 40% on two family, but I'm just literally pulling numbers off the top of my head, to be honest. So. Because we're talking if units. If we go by units, then yeah, I think the the twenty and the forty are percentage wise max. Can you start to read that yet, Tom? Bigger. <laughs> so so you, so you wait so so by by that if we go with multifamily, let let's just play this off. You go with twenty percent for multifamily. You're looking at a twenty unit apartment building with an with eighty single family homes. So does that sound right, or we? No, I think that's the 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 apartments are going to have to be a little bit higher of a percentage. 
Yeah, am I thinking backwards? For a that? limit. Mm -hmm. One building would be 30 units because they're usually 10 per floor if you go three floors. The typical garden apartment is 30 units. Yeah, I'm, and I'm just thinking of um, like I, working around numbers. Like if we say 20% cap on multifamily, you're saying no more than 20 units, but then 80, you, you're going to need 80 single family homes to. to yeah, that's what you're saying. That, that's a lot of area mm -hmm. to be able to put in a very small apartment building. Yeah, we'd have to make the. So do we percentage. want to swing it the other way and say 40% on multifamily and maybe 20% on two family townhomes? Again, recognizing that these are recommendations and more brain power will be put to use combing so through our thoughts. Dan has a guy that's expert at that. Your concept of what we're talking about now, if we don't exactly pin it down, I mean, we could use that language and, and that guy can probably pin it down with more um, knowledge behind it. Well, if he can come back with better, with, with some more research on that for the Board of Supervisors, you guys could then so just take our recommendation to, yeah, and go with it. Yeah. Yeah, we could just put an X in there for now for it's this place as well, a placeholder. What you're how, how it is going to be is going to be in that, in that format like that. But I I think the important part is to um, have the exclusion for the single families oh, and the hundred that it can be a hundred percent, and we could put. Um, an X for the other two to be as placeholders for percentages at a later time. Just leave it blank as it is now. Matt can help us with that, Dan. Yep. Or blank, yeah. yeah. Troy Christie. I know I can't hold myself out as a percentage uh, expert in, in this. Well, I mean, you could do a really, I mean, you know, like, a, so most garden apartment complexes range, I mean, I just know this, they range between 250 to 300 unit, units is like a, that's a good number for them to make a whole, like a, a number of garden apartments. So if you go 300 units and that's, in, but you, it, it can't exceed 40 percent then you're kind of putting that developer into a position where they now have to uh hang on i'm gonna do quick i'm gonna do 60 percent of 300 right you'd have to be 1.6 times 300 is that right 40 would be the three 300 would be i mean you you need if, if it was 400 garden apartments you would need 600 homes right to balance that single family homes to balance that out that's 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 insane. That, that's that's an insane. That's not going to happen. No. And that's 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 why I don't know what percentages to put down here. Well, but you almost have to look at what you know, what are typical developments and what can you generate in terms of area. Like you almost have to take a look at, at some of the developments that have been put around. Like I keep going back to Hastings down in South Payette. You know what was that mix down there? I'd be interested to see what that is. And that's, well, what about and that's Ryan, right on McConnell Trail? They're, yeah. They have a percentage. I don't know what it is. Dan, you, yeah, they have a percentage, yeah. They, well, couldn't we also you look at South Point? I mean, it's right in our backyard. Yeah, I mean, South Point is just so big, though. It's That's a development of regional significance and impact. <laughs> that's a big project. You're not going to get those every day. I mean, you got to think about what, what, you know, like the, you know, like even the Fuchs farm isn't even 200 acres, is it? 198. Yeah, 200 acres. So if you have 200 acres and only 50% of it is usable, right? I mean, it's Western Pennsylvania. 50% is usable, you have 100 acres left. If you were gonna put, let's just say the average density is, we say is eight units per acre, right? So the maximum, you, you'll never get that density either in that 100 acres. So, <laughs> It's, it's, it's getting, t I'm trying to drill myself down to where, what's reality. Right. Well, that's why I'm at, that's, that's why I'm, I'm concerned about us even giving a recommendation on percentages, because we just be throwing spaghetti at a wall and seeing if it's sticking. Yeah, and it, 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 it's really what's selling at that point in time and what the housing type and the unit type is. I mean, we need percentages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
but I, I don't think that we're in a position to recommend any tonight. Not tonight. Yeah. No. Okay. We'll get it rewritten and get, come back to you with some suggestions. Yeah, and once you have that, if Matt works on it, could you get it to them also before our meeting? I'm always going to get it to us, too. Just so we can see what's... Absolutely. Yep. I'd be curious to see, like, um, uh, what's that one in... Um, in Cranberry, right off of... Um, I'm trying Meter to Farm. Huh? Meter. I don't think that's the one I'm... I don't think that's the one I'm There's, thinking. Of. It's a charter development. It's the one right up off of Rochester Road. Uh, I was just there today. <laughs> it, is that freedom? freedom? The only people, the only people that are doing Rochester. big whole like building villages is charter. In this area, and they're from out east. They're it was a mixed plan because there were some Ryan homes in there. There was some. There, were, there was a couple of different uh, on developments. the single family side. Well, we have that here. Yeah, yeah, but I'm trying to think of what the name of it was. That's I mean, Scarmese built basically built a you know um, one story housing, you know, sort of senior living stuff yeah. in a mixed in a mixed with a PRD. I mean, the re the real key is. How much multifamily do you want and how much how much garden apartments do you want I mean you know if you give the developer back some density with those those he can you know it, it does it gets the township more people living in the community with in less space less to maintain I don't know do they pay taxes people in apartments pay taxes they pay wage taxes I'm almost feeling better Okay. I'm almost feeling better talking about percentages for area. Because if you say multifamily, 20% of the total development area, however many units they cram in there, that's, that's on them. They're not going to build something that's not marketable. So right. they're going to make it look good. So you tell them they can't have more than 20% of the development area uh, as multifamily and 40% as two-family townhouse and then, and then you know, go from there. That I can envision, but when we, when, we, when we flip the conversation from area to units, that's yeah. when I can't. Like, and did you hear what I was saying there? Like, um, when we were talking about units, I can't envision percentages. When we were talking about developable, developable area, like then I can say, hey, no more than 20% 20, 20 of the developable, developable area as multifamily. You know, they can cram as many units, units in that 20% of the land area as they want. It's not going to, they're not going to make it look ugly. They're going to make it look attractive because they want to sell it. Uh, I can envision that 20% cap on total areas, multifamily, 40% on um, two family or townhouses, mm -hmm. and then no cap on single family. But when we start talking about number of units, it, because of the scale, in the density, I can't envision it. So I do know that it takes about 15 acres to put in those 300 units if you build a flat house. So, so think about it. So, that, so if you had 100 acres and they needed 15 for multifamily, then your, your theory on area, 15% of the area would be limited to multifamily. Cap it at 20 acres. if they go 15. They could jam in 200 to 300 units. So maybe we maybe we work got a outside of ourselves there. Maybe developable area actually is the right. Or the I think, I think you're right. I think that's why this was this way because we copied this from South Park. <laughs> <laughs> and they have a development out there that they put in. If you if you've been to the end of the the T that comes all the way from town, mm -hmm. uh, there's a place called Summit Station. Actually, our favorite Cecil developer put it in Sabatino. And he, I thought you were going to say he put in apartments, or... he put in towns, and he put in single family. Is that on so the that one's and and he left a piece open for commercial there too. So it's a true, true. You know, and it was made as a transit-oriented development because it was close to the T. Jason, they're, they're the experts. Yeah. they will make it nice because they need to sell it. So right. you don't need to second guess them. They they know what they're doing. So so area area. I mean that would be a good one to look at. I, I feel comfortable making recommendations on area yeah. as I've processed it through in my head here, I just think not on units. Yeah, I agree with you. 
Christy, do you have thoughts? No, I agree. Oh, okay. What are you talking about? My, my hamster trips a lot. It's not his fault. All right, well, why don't we come back with some recommendations and talk about that again and give some examples and, and you know, show you some things. Okay. Okay, um, moving on to the... Um, uh, yeah, we're good. These were in the use regulations. Uh, no more than six townhouses in any one stick, which is... That's, that's pretty much, that, that's a given that most people, that's the way they do it. But that you do want to limit them. We moved the high-rise structures over to the use regulations. I just forgot about that. We moved it around. Accessory structures are the same. Um, the maximum density, we got that in there at eight units per acre. Signs, are the same. And then we, we came up with some Recommend it. Uh, we also included just on top of everything else to make it oh, to make sure we had everything it. covered. We added in the regulations of the uh, planned residential development shall be met uh, uh, shall be met unless specifically addressed in this section. Yeah, and then we gave some <clears throat> we gave some widths on lots uh, for this type of development, and again they're suggested. If there's any comments, to want to make them bigger or smaller, but they're they're made. These are typical. I mean, people want less lot. They want uh, and to get more lots per street. Do you need the line about high-rise structures not permitted if you have maximum building height listed for all the types in the chart? You really don't even care about high-rise structures because yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't get to that point anyway. You're right. We could remove that, just to avoid any confusion. I think it was just, it doesn't hurt anything, though. Okay. It's like a double negative. And then we added uh, sidewalk and pedestrian amenities, sidewalks, um, connections, and all sorts of things. And then we add in there um, other amenities to be put in in appropriate locations. And then I think we moved on to the commercial mixed use district. And pretty much this, this, this grabbed the same things that we talked about. Um, the main element uh, in this one that we changed was in the use regulations. We kept um, all the uses shall conform to C1 area in bulk. They stayed the same about the buffers, but then we got down to limiting the maximum uh, if if any structure is used for a non-residential purpose. The maximum square footage of any single structure shall not exceed 20,000 square feet. It's like a small drugstore or drugstore. I shouldn't say a small drugstore. It's a drugstore. Wait. So that was the big change on that one. And then we added in all the other things that we add on the uh, mixed use residential. So we want, is it covered under the use regulation? Because we were talking about limiting square footage. It's in use regulations, yes. But it was going to limit square footage, whether it was on a township road or a state road. And I don't see that now. Now it's just a blanket maximum square footage. Well, yeah, we could, we could add that in. Do you remember talking about that? I was trying to come in on the connection. It wasn't good. Jack, was, Jack was keeping me out. Uh, no, I think... So the regulations 
information is regardless of whether it is. Yeah, like like you're only allowed to put a pharmacy on a state highway. Yes. So. But I don't think that's what we discussed last month. We had said like something small, like a sal like salons pharmacy, like small family run pharmacy. We had no problem with that being on a township right, road. We didn't want to write. That's considered neighborhood pharmacy, Solon and Jeffrey. Yeah, but that's but that's so that's how we were going. We were going to limit square footage. We were going to have square footage limits on the uses by right. On this. B blanket like that not exceeding 3,500 square feet on convenience store it was going to make it a blanket uh, square footage limit so with those small those small footprint stores that meet any of those would go there but then anything that exceeded that then would get pushed to a state store so a, a small family pharmacy could be on a township road but a Rite Aid or Walgreens would be on a state road yes uh, okay but right now, a family pharmacy couldn't be on a township road the way this is written. Uses by right. Pharmacies under under on state. Pharmacies only under on state roads. Yeah, there was different language that we wanted to put in because I think there wasn't a because general retail merchandise store is listed under uses by right. So theoretically, a Walmart or a Target now can be on a township road the way this is written. But we don't want that. We want mm -hmm. so so th there so there was a square foot limit put in under use regulations, but that's not where we discussed it. We talked about that uses by right. There was going to be something in there. Um, before it broke down into C through Y, that C through Y was going to be, everything C through Y was going to be limited on square footage. And then any, and then any use by right that exceed that square footage would automatically be a use by right, would, would get pushed to a state road. Okay, well, we can move this limit that we had, we can, we can use this same language and put this same language and put it up above here. I mean, limited. use regulations could just be clarified. If it's less than 3,500 3, square feet or less than it can confront on a township road, if it's greater than 3,500 up to 20,000, it's on a state road and above 20,000 is not permitted. But now you're saying that you'll never get a Walmart or okay. Target in there. So you're just saying modify this one to say add the 3,500 in here? Yeah, definitely. Is that what people are saying? Okay. That's what I'm saying. Is everyone, anyone agreeing with me? Or? I strongly disagree. It's like my greatest fear to let, I'm like railroading. So I just, I always want to make sure that we're in agreement. Here. So with the, the um, with the square footage, then you don't have to break it into the. You will leave it out the of the states. uses by right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah less we'll than 3,500 square foot uh, can be put onto a township road. It doesn't matter what the use is. Yeah. That's what, we're, well, the uses are limited to the, to the township road anyway, but. Anything 3,500 square feet or less, we're going to say can be put on a township road. So that would be all of the uses by right that, that are in, in the top section. And then as we go to the front on state roads, the maximum there can be up to 20,000. I mean, so like a coin operated laundry. I mean, if it's a small square foot. Well, yeah, that's I, 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 it's just it's just odd, and I'm, I'm not quite. I, I don't know if I'm overthinking it or. Yeah, I'm, I'm worried about some of those businesses. They could be on a township road, but 3,500 might be a made-up number for some of them. Daycare. 3,500 doesn't sound like a lot of space for the daycare. Technically, what do you care how, how big a daycare is? I mean, I, I obviously don't want to see one of those, uh, those national chains that are, you know, might be 20,000 square feet, but even a uh, financial institution, but 3,500, that, that never, you know, 
But who knows beyond that? Well, they just they just put a Mac machine in a closet anyway, so it's, <laughs> you know, there's no, you know, no business in professional offices. 3,500 isn't a lot of space. I mean, somebody might have a 70 acre tract in that um, new um, mixed use commercial. Also, they can't put a, uh, a office building there. Yeah, I'm just thinking that we, we discussed some things last month. I don't see it reflected in here right now. And I. I but Jason, wait up. I, I think the 3,500 you're talking about were the kind of uses that generate a lot of people. A business office. If it's 6,000 square feet, that doesn't mean it's going to generate a lot of traffic on that township road, where a 3,500 square foot pharmacy may. So, so, so I'm just saying, I don't think we should limit all, every permitted use to 3,500 up on you know, mixed use commercial. I think, I that's, think that's why I think that's why Matt finally ended up with we just discussed a maximum number for anything. What's the maximum? 20,000. But that still doesn't work for me. Uh, that for me. is so. And what I'm also seeing is that this uses by right, the point three, all the things under it, they don't say uses by right on a township road. They, didn't, they, they don't say they have to be on a township sure, road. Sure, sure. So I would say if you're limiting on a township road, um, it, it depends because if it's in that mixed use, they're going with all the perimeter buffers, and they have the, the three-story max as far as res residential is concerned. Are, do they have a, simil a similar height restriction when it comes to commercial or business? Yeah, they're all still regulated by whatever the C1 is. Okay, so I, I think that 20,000 as a max is good. It doesn't say you have to be 20,000. It says the maximum square footage of any single tenant shall not exceed 20,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. So they can make a 10,000 square foot building and have multiple these multiple uses. Just picking out two of them, two of them here, a bicycle shop and uh, they could put a 100,000 square foot food store. Yeah, yeah. They could have it on either side. They could have a, you know. On a township road though? That's what I'm saying. That's, that's, I, I mean, that's a problem I have. Hear what you're saying, but at the same time, in Cecil, as far as township roads are concerned, there's not going to be there's not going to be as much driver to say, hey, people are going to go to this township road to go to this strip mall. No, yeah, nobody's yeah, nobody's realistically yeah. going to do that. They're not going to build it. It's not okay, build it, and they will come. The reality of of where we are. Yeah, I think the twenty thousand and, and what was drafted does make. Um, and then the uses by right is the the A or the C through Y above that don't say they have to be on state roads. It, it doesn't mean that they can't be on state roads. Right. It just right. means they can also be on. They be on. They can be on local roads. I'm just looking at I like I know when South Point Two was first developed, they were looking to put in a Target in there, right? Wasn't it a Target? Oh, Walmart. Was it Walmart? Yeah, okay, sorry. Walmart. So, so I mean, we, we have no idea how things are going to continue to develop. Five seventy six is still so new to us. I mean, it, it's it's feasible that it that at at ten fifteen. You know, we're we're talking about we're writing something that is going to be in effect for a long time. And ten years from now, it may be very feasible that Walmart or Target wants to put something. <laughs> Right off the, right off the exit there, and so I, I'm just trying to yeah, I see what you're think through it all. We don't want that on a township road, but but on but on a state road. So, I, which most likely, if they were to do anything along those lines, it would be more so uh, off of the. Yeah. It wouldn't be. It would be off of the state road. If they're from a commercial business standpoint, they're not going to be like, let's make it go through. Like, <laughs> let's go know? all the way to the back. So I think that's why I'm saying the, the, the draft as it is with the 20,000 max, square foot max for any one tenant. From a business standpoint, people aren't going to put it way out of the way. Right, you're not going to put it on the Chicago road. Or, yeah. or, so 
why I'm okay. And we've added the traffic studies in yeah. to, to make sure that. That know, is true. That was added. That wasn't in there before. That wasn't in there last time. So that was another. That was another. The other thing that could happen, though, is there could be a tract of ground that gets developed that could be a become a township road that's not inadequate. I mean, all these Grange Road and all these roads around here, obviously they're inadequate for any kind of businesses up there, but we keep talking about township roads. We're talking about the old existing township road. We're talking about new roads that could, could be created. Then the second thing is, do we owe taking over a road in a development? Like, like, did we owe taking over those roads in South Point? I mean, we do, we, we take over every residential development because those are individual f homeowners and families you can treat them different than a business, but the shopping center, no municipality takes over and plows their parking lots and their roads through it. Why is a, shop, why is a, why is a development like South Point any different than a shopping center? Uh, years ago, and it wasn't your, none of you were on the board, the Planning Commission, when Redford Studios went in up on top of that little mini, that little strip down by South Point, the, the, the Planning Commission wanted them to put it to township specs and have the township take over their road. I said, why would we want to take over a road that goes up the road like a driveway? It gets a nice little yeah. business. That, that's their complex, just like a shopping, little shopping center. Why do we have to be involved? Yeah. So, so maybe that's the other thing. I know it's not part of this, but we got to consider that. If Koski puts in a development of an industrial park, we have to take over his roads. We took over the roads in the TV Order Park. What really, other than taxes, what do we get out of it? Why do we owe businesses to take over you know, their, their uh, roads? I know J Joe Leverage from Gateway at the time you know, insisted on it. He, had, I mean, he believed that we owed it, but I don't know if that's the case. Well, I think, I think with the advent of homeowners associations and other things like that, I, don't, I, I think that's more of a modern thing now. Before, there really wasn't you know, that type of stuff. Now, in South Point, there's a business owners association. You have HOAs in almost every plan. So you don't need to take them over. You can say, we don't want them. Well, that, that we did. I'm talking about from now on, if, like I said, if, if that ADB property, he's going to snake a road through there and put parcels. Do we owe, just because he put that road in, do we owe plowing it and maintaining it from here on in? Well, we, we paid Commerce Drive when it needs it. We paid... Um, well, well, the example, the most recent example is the uh, Fairfield development. We didn't take over that road. Right, that's right. And there's multiple businesses on it. So, I mean, that's and, else. and you can at a later day if you choose to, but you, you don't have to. They can offer it. You don't have to take it. Right. Yeah. But, I mean, if you get a mixed-use development, though, Tom, you're going to have single families. What if the single families are buried way in the back? <laughs> And you have to take one road. You maybe you take over the spine road that gets back to the single family. Well, better. South Point Boulevard, both uh, off the of piano, uh, the, the apartments, and Ironwood all branch off that way. The, the county still maintains. I mean, the the spoa maintains the landscaping, the lighting, and signs and things like that. We take care of the asphalt itself. But if they, that would have been theirs, they still would have taken care of that road. If, if, if they would have been responsible, and then those homeowners. Um, uh, they won't have to worry about whether we owned it or they, they wouldn't care whether we owned it or SPO owned it. Right. I'm just saying, for we have, whatever it is now, we, we have those, but from here on in, I, I think we need to really seriously look at that. Do we go take over the road just for businesses? When it comes to mixed use, what Dan said I think is, is very helpful as far as where the residential is going to be. Yeah. The development itself. I think the residents would, would expect the township to to take over the road at least, um, at least their, their primary access route uh, into and out of uh, their residential plan. Doesn't doesn't ha doesn't have to. We have to think about that one too. Yeah, but it, uh, and, and it, it and I, I see how we got to that conversation from here. But um, we got to finish this. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I see what you're saying on the twenty thousand. So I mean, the. Someone smarter than me wrote it. I'm just trying to understand it. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I think all of the things that you're asking are very valid. I'm just looking at it, too, from another perspective of saying, hey, on the business side of things, where would somebody do this? What Tom is saying is very applicable as far as if it is a large uh, developed mixed use where residential is in one spot and in another. I mean, what roads are the top? What roads 
there's the chance that she'll donate her blood to her to her husband. But as far as accessibility um, on the business side of things, more likely than not, residential is going to be in the back. They're going to want to more accessible to the general public because they're going to want to drive business into that location. So it's it's not germane to what we're talking yeah, about here tonight. Right. That's really a supervisor's. Um, that's yeah. a uh, that's Sorry. a policy decision. To get so, back to this, though, we're probably safer than the twenty thousand. Yes. I think we all agree. No Come Walmart's going to go on Drains Road. I'll say yes. I'm good with I, it. I think the twenty thousand is. Yeah. All right. So I, I mean, just just in summary, it seems like. It seems like uh, I got some changes here, but I think the mostly what we need to come back is in, in sort of look at that residential mixed use, give you guys some examples on that. I, I do have one more question. Sure. So on four use regulations, D, and now we're in mixed use commercial here, but it says signs shall be permitted in our subject requirements of section 1411 of the UDO signs in residential district. Should that say commercial? Um, it should probably, yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that we have signs in the commercial we do. That might be a different ordinance. Let me, good catch. Let me check that. Good catch. Pay attention. Yay. Well, he's looking at that. If something doesn't work on what we're doing now, we can always change it. If the first development goes in and sees, we, you know, that's not what we anticipated, it can always be amended. We can't get bogged down where we, 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 uh, what is? Yeah. Where it's, yeah. It's a grand experiment. If it works there, you know, might put it in more places. So the last I don't have anything up in PowerPoint. The last part of the uh, presentation was Wait, Dan, just really quick, I'm sure. sorry. Under the use where it's um, the use regulations, or I'm sorry, five, sidewalk and pedestrian amenities. So A, sidewalks Sidewalks or other, other well, yeah. there, there are many developments that don't have sidewalks or have sidewalks on one side of the street. Sure. I think that's. Is that all we want is on one side of the street? But if you're putting in a, if you're putting in a, a mixed use commercial development or residential development, I think you want sidewalks on both sides of the street. No, I'm just saying the way it's written, it looks to me like it's saying that there must be sidewalks everywhere. Um, but, but maybe I'm not reading it. Just it. The sidewalks or other walkways acceptable to the governing body. So it's there's some wiggle room. In the so that could mean no sidewalks. Um, well, they would know. present a plan if the supervisors say we're fine with them on one side, mm -hmm. but the supervisor would leave some some ability to say no, we want them on both sides. Yeah, I don't think it gives a provision moving forward for them to only to have none. It's just saying you need sidewalks in the plan. Oh, uh, I mean that's not what it looks like to me. But if what it looks would you suggest? And this is mixed use commercial under now, right? Yes. Um, so I, I would say all sidewalks should be in all mixed use commercial districts. Whether it's on one side or both sides of the street, they would be there. It would be up to the governing body as far as the supervisors to say, <coughs> you need to have it on both sides, sides or one side. I mean, they're going to come in with a plan and a mixed use development and show you what they want to do. They're going to probably have sidewalks on both sides. Of, in their commercial area, they're going to have sidewalks everywhere, and then they're going to lead to the other parts of the development, and whether they're on one side or the other or both, it's kind of depending upon the product they're going to put in. I think that covers it. Like yeah, that's why I say it's, I think it's I wide. just think there's something missing, like in front of sidewalks, like maybe any sidewalks or other walkways. In other words, to me, it looks like it's saying that sidewalks are required everywhere, but that's just the, maybe it's just me the way I'm reading it. Well, it, 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 it does say they're required everywhere, but it says they're required along all streets or driveways. It doesn't say they're required on both sides. It just says you're gonna put sidewalks into your commercial, mixed-use commercial district. 
uh, whether you have them on one side or both side, we'll figure out when we get to. All right, as long as you all think it's clear, it's fine by me. I don't think it's clear, but <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> I'm okay with it, but I, I want you to be okay. Yes, I, that's how Not I feel a, as well. Everybody's going to be happy. That's <laughs> It's, it's going to be contingent on what is being developed, who's developing. They have to present a plan. The supervisors have to approve it at that point in time. So it is going to be a matter of what, what's applicable in that plan. I agree, but that's not what this says. That's what I'm reading. Okay. Okay, I'm just reading it differently. I'm just reading it differently. <laughs> so it's fine. Let's just move on. Okay. Um, the, the, last, <laughs> the last part of this was uh, related to the where do we use these new districts. And as we, we just laid out for everybody, um, it, it was the Rising Road area, and then there was one other area that we were going to use, the mixed use commercial. Uh, over around the Costi property. This will be changed now based upon our discussion earlier. This mixed use commercial won't be as big, but it still be, will be used as a buffer. So um, up along Rising Road, and this is where most of the comments came in on Monday night. Most of the people were here from Rising Road. Uh, there was people that owned large tracts of land like Mr. Sullivan and uh, who was being rezoned as commercial. And then Mr. Scallo had people here that was being mixed use um, commercial. They had comments. And then there were just generally people that were opposed, mostly opposed to more traffic on Rising Road. So that, that was the general, I, well, I'm they, just kind of summarizing. And they didn't care whether it was residential or commercial, they just didn't want more traffic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. one, one fellow here's only complaining because I just don't want to see anything happen down. He lives a quarter mile above that whole proposed area. He just, I don't want to see it. I want to see it stay the way it is. So that was the harshest comment we got about, about not doing anything. Uh, when he mentioned Mr. Sullivan, Mr. Sullivan has a sales agreement with that Scalo to buy his property. And um, um, they're not sure that they want to develop, but they like the, the, the mixed use. They're not sure they want commercial or residential. So they want us to hold up on it. And, and I, I said that, if we pick one, I mean, the one we, we're going to adopt something. If we pick that, if you don't ultimately you make up your mind and you want something residential, you can come back and have a, have a rezoning request. I said, but most likely what we're picking is commercial. You're going to want commercial where it's that interchange. He says, well, we, we, we don't know yet. We'd like to leave it up in there. We said, we can't leave any area unzoned, but we have to do something with it. We have to pick something, and they don't know which one. And that was his only complaint. We want to leave it open until we decide. Now, Scalo's agreement with him is contingent on getting it the zoning changed to what Scalo wants, and he doesn't know what he wants yet. That's so that's holding up his agreement. Yeah, that's, he he, not, wants, he wants to sell his property to, to Scalo, and it won't close until you know Scalo gets the zoning he wants. But he doesn't I'm know. very confident that Scalo will figure out how to make money off of however it is zoned. <laughs> but I mean, that, that was the harshest words that were exchanged. And he's mad that he said, oh, we might have to sue the township if they change it to something we don't want. But what do you want? We don't know yet. Well, so that was the harshest thing, right, Dan? Yeah, I would agree. And, and zoning is a legislative decision. It's not appealable. So if the township changes or zone rezones your property, you can't appeal it. You can appeal if we get it technical error, if we did post it right or that we didn't have the hearing right or some advertising right, if we made an administrative mistake, the judge would just order us to have a new hearing. But he can't substitute his judgment for ours and say, no, I think that should be commercial. I thought you were going to say that um, Miranda was in here trying to get us to, to flip that R2 to, to MUR <laughs> and, and redo their entire plan. And one other lady said she has property. Hers was supposed to be mixed use residential. I might want it to be mixed use commercial, even though she's residential. And I, you rarely hear that from, huh. from somebody. But that was the only basically three comments that were that were um, con 
contrary to what you were showing here. Do you think any other one did? Jack, you were there. What was the? I you took see? I took notes on my computer. I kept them all. <laughs> all the people that came up, I took notes on every person. I, I have them. But yeah, I agree with you, Tom. They were they were mostly the people on Rising, and most of the issue was Rising Red. The condition. Yeah. Pen dot, I can understand it, it's that. Rated as a, pen dot, it's rated as an F category. Pen dot rates all their roads by priority and traffic and things like that. So someone was saying that the pen dot just refuses to do anything. It's not that. It's just low on the priority to, to work on that road. But someday. If know, there was a rating lower than F, pen dot would give it that rating. They yeah. want. If, if PennDOT could give that road a rating lower than F, they would. They just don't want to do anything with that road. The only way they're ever going to do anything with that road is if we start developing up that corridor. And then their hands will be forced. Right. I was going to say the exact same thing. That's how, that, that, that's how roads get improved. Yeah. They, they, that makes sense. They, they just, they, they're not going to do anything with it as it sits. Yes. I wholeheartedly agree. So... I mean, we're, we're not we're not going with any of these. I just show you these here tonight because this, again, this is what was this was the third part of what was proposed. Uh, but I think Tom, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, the supervisors want to finish the MUC and the MUR before they do these ones. Right, we have to have. This you have to get the, you get the districts done first, and then you can decide on what you want to rezone. That's the next piece. We always said that the, the steering committee recommended a lot of other changes in zoning. We're only concentrating on these three right now because they were needed. They have sewers and things like that. Next year, we can start working on some other quarter if we see some potential uh, to get it rezoned to match up to the comprehensive plan map. And this could be the next thing we do, this Rising Road area. I think we should get on it because it's, it's already people are buying. One lady told us as soon as that ad appeared in the paper for that hearing, got three calls from different real estate companies that are, 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 are by purchasing their property. That's here. So I think we've got to get on it and uh, resolve it one way or the other and adopt something there because that's our new interchange in the township. So this is a land use map. So as Tom said, there's lots of colors on here. <laughs> lots lots there's that can be done. There's been lots of colors on there for quite some time. <laughs> So I think that's that's I think that's kind of it. We'll come back again with the MUC and the MUR, and you know once it gets a final, hopefully next month, you guys would be comfortable enough to make a recommendation. It gets to the supervisors in October, they can give it a last look. That's done, and then they can come back to looking at the rezoning again on on the other districts. And when you look at it, at it, there's a it, lot of things yellow. come up through the, through the months. We can have a you know, you know, address minor things. A lot of times, when, uh, from our perspective, we'll get a list of four or five little amendments we got to work on, and we know we can change. So we'll have one hearing and do four or five little amendments. And uh, so we can keep doing that as, as we polish this off. But if we can get the bulk of it done, we can always work in progress. Yes, sir. So the, the, the last, last thing. <laughs> oh my. I know everybody wants to go home. I do too. But um, <clears throat> the last thing we talked about was the changes, the general changes in the UDO. And I think we did a lot of talk about the uh, ADU, the accessory dwelling unit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, at, at the advice of the solicitor, we're going to drop that for now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're not going to talk about that. Yay. And we're just down to really just the cleanup stuff that we had in the ordinance before and was that was that also with the um, um, warehouse conditional use yes yeah that was that was probably the biggest change was it not that was really the yeah the other than the ADU the warehouse conditional use was the part of it and what we did was if you look at the other ordinance that I did give you there were some limits put on the uh, just trying to see where that one is, on what page. It'd be nice if he put page numbers on this. It's got to be at the beginning. Okay, section eight. It's like the fourth page in. 
Mm -hmm. Warehouse has been changed to just indoor. Um, and we eliminated a lot of other stuff uh, under comparable uses there. Those all taken out. So we're after discussion, if we put it in, it's just going to be interior. That's that's kind of what I thought where we all entered, ended. So are we, the section 10 is staying in as is with accessory uses? Uh, no, that would, again, the solicitor is reviewing this, so this is going to. Okay. So be modified yeah. so we're just okay. we're just focused on section eight yeah I, I don't think we're going to do anything with this right away so we'll bring this after we get the solicitor we'll get this one cleaned up and bring this back to you too okay everybody had enough of me Dan, you are delighted. yeah you're just too kind christy never be too much of anything Mm. All right, I think we're done for tonight. So, do we need to make a motion on section eight? I, I don't think you need any other motions. Okay. Yeah, I think you're. I think you're good for now because that's going to be revised too. So, I think it'd be better to come back, get you a clean one, and get to mm -hmm. that point. That sounds good. Wonderful, um, Jack. Anything else on correspondence and announcements? Any additional discussion? Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> I second. All right, meeting adjourned, 9.09. Hallelujah. Shorter than last month. 707. 707. 707 to 9.09, okay. Oh. That was planned. All right. My, my capacity has run out. <laughs> my cup has runneth over. I need, I need the info on that. I will get the info over. Um, the oh, yeah. guy's name is Jay. Okay. Yeah, Dan, um, I don't know how you keep so energized because my capacity is done. He That's runs. Yeah. You, you run do still, don't you? Yeah. You run still, don't you? No. No? No, you ride a bike. Still, if you ever want to babysit my toddlers. Oh, we love that. <laughs>